feel like I have a, a story to tell for a reason. It's always going to be hard. You know, I wake up every day, and put my clothes on, get ready for school, and just remember it's a hurt. Um, I just want to make her proud, that's why I do it. Once I did that at Granite Bay, I said, you know, I want to make this a regular thing. I want to spread the word. I want to, want to show people what, what can really happen to a, a selfish mistake at doing and driving. So be smart. Uh, put your family first. That's the most important thing is just put your family first and get behind the wheel. You're putting everybody in danger, not just yourself. My name is Steven Fonzo. I'm a senior at Granite Bay High School, a captain on the football team, and I'm committed to play football at Sacramento State. Today I stand up here in front of you to share my biggest weakness. Something I share with you in the hope of guidance and a hope of realization because it is by far one of the hardest things that has ever happened. To me. One, of the, one of the worst things that has ever happened to me. I was eight years old in the year 2005. My mother went out for a girls night out with all of her friends on June 17th and told me she was going to be home late and she'd see me in the morning. I went to bed sound asleep when I heard something that sounded, that to me sounded like laughter, thinking it was my mom and her friends. I looked at the clock and saw it was 3.30 in the morning. Felt that something was wrong. I walked out there to check what was going on and I see two chaplains sitting on my couch with my mom holding my sister Marcy in her arms and my father walking towards me. My father, with tears in his eyes, looked at me and started crying. First time I ever saw my father cry. My dad looked at me in the eyes and he said, son, your sister Lindsay passed away last night in a car accident. And from that moment on, my life, my life has changed. Imagine losing your best friend, someone who you looked up to. My sister was 12 years older than me. At eight years old, you can barely comprehend death, let alone the circumstances behind it. And that is why as I get older, it becomes harder for me to, harder for me because I understand what happened. Lindsay's friends allowed her to get behind the wheel of her car and drive home while she was three times over the legal limit. On the way home, Lindsay was reportedly on her phone, dropped her phone, and while she went to go grab her phone, she swerved into oncoming traffic. She went into a head-on collision with a mother, mother and daughter, daughter of another vehicle. Lindsay's car flipped multiple times and landed in a ditch on the side of a road. Lindsay was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected from the back of the windshield of the car and killed instantly. From the accident, Lindsay lost her arm and if she was alive, would have been paralyzed from the neck down. The young girl in the other vehicle broke her leg. A couple days after the accident, my sister was put to rest. A day before her funeral, my family went to the mortuary to say our own personal goodbyes. I remember sitting there, talking to, talking to Lindsay as she lay in the casket, praying that she would reply. She didn't. When my family said it was time to go, time to leave my sister for the last time I would ever be able to have a long time with her, see her face, I couldn't help but reach for her hand in the casket only to feel a fake plastic hand that was put on because Lindsay's arm was not there from the accident. The touch of her hand will forever haunt me for the rest of my life, as that was the last time I ever felt my big sister. A plastic arm was the last thing I ever felt of my sister. I want you to picture your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, or your loved ones crying themselves to sleep for the rest of their life because of a mistake you made after you have been drinking or after you take a glance at your phone while driving. I still to this day will have a rough night and cry myself to sleep as to why I asked God why he had to take my beautiful sister from my family so soon. People always ask me why football means so much to me. It's because my sister Lindsay was never, a never able to watch me play a game of football. Her mistake caused her to lose her life. I am the first to tell you that I have drank alcohol. I'm not ashamed of that. I'm a teenager in every way, shape, and form. But for those times that I, I have done it, my sister was in the back of my head and reminded me of the repercussions of my actions. I know the pain it would cause my family if I had made one mistake and gotten behind the wheel. The trauma you create for the loved ones around you is absolutely horrific. My sister made a simple mistake and it cost her her life. Just like it could happen to you or to me if we were to do the same thing. I don't think I could finish my time up here saying anything stronger than saying one thing. I have a niece who is 20 months, 20 months old. Her name is Piper Lindsay. 
My niece was born on my sister Lindsay's birthday, July 12, 2013, as a gift from God. I look at my niece every day as she has me wrapped around her finger, but I look at her every day and remind myself that my niece is never going to be able to know who her Aunt Lindsay is. She will never be able to see her beautiful aunt in person. So I want you to sit in your chair right now and truly think about it. Is it worth it? Is it worth getting behind the wheel of a vehicle intoxicated when you can just call home? Because trust me, the trouble you may get in with your parents is a lot better than them getting a knock on the door from chaplains saying that you have died in a car accident. If my sister would have just called home instead of, me dri instead of driving, my niece Piper would be able to know who her Aunt Lindsay is today. I hope me coming to your school today is going to be able to show you how serious drinking and driving can be. How much damage, you can, be, how much damage can be caused by your loved ones by such a selfish decision. I hope from this day forward each and every one of you will put your family first before you get behind the wheel of a vehicle intoxicated so that way your loved ones don't have to be me up here sharing a story similar to mine.